Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace and blessings of the Almighty be upon you all, my beloved brothers and sisters. The Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was a unique man. Even before he, was, uh, even before he became a prophet uh, of Allah, may, pe may peace be upon him, uh, what we need to know is he had a beautiful reputation in society and community. He always took time to assist people, to help them. He took time to assist the poor and the needy and the downtrodden, the weak and the sickly and so on. Uh, he spent moments uh, really to try and help as much as he could. And this is why when he was in business with Khadija binti Khuwailid radiallahu anha, uh, what happened was, uh, and, and that became his wife, he was so honest with her that she really loved this individual who was 15 years younger than her and she proposed for uh, marriage of this man. He was definitely a person with upright morals. And this is why he accepted the proposal. He was no ways a womanizer as some people think because at the age of 25, he married someone who was much older than him and he stayed with her for many years. And at the same time, what we need to realize is that he only had her as his wife for all those years. And he was a person who fulfilled her rights so much that she praised him time and again. And he praised her as well. And he always remembered the days that he was with her. After the prophethood, there are so many instances where the people who had the greatest impact were those who were poorer and the downtrodden. It was amazing because if you look at the, uh, those who reverted to Islam, or should I say converted to Islam, the reason why people use the term revert is because there is a narration of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, that states that every single person is born upon nature the nature of worshipping one God. So later on they become something else uh, or they stay upon that particular nature. So if a person becomes something else and then reverts to what they were, they are known as a revert. And that's why that term is used more than the term convert. But either way, we know what we are speaking about. So what, would, what happened at the time is they had converted and those who converted were the downtrodden to the degree that the elite of Mecca actually told Muhammad, may peace be upon him, that we are ready to accept your message on condition that you th throw away or you distance yourself from those who are the poor, the downtrodden, those who used to be slaves here and so on. And he refused. In fact, Allah Almighty uh, sent instruction to him saying, do not chase these people away. Do not chase away those who are calling out to your Rabb those who are calling out to your maker or to their maker. And this was referring to the poor and the downtrodden. So if you take a look at Bilal ibn Rabah, he was an Abyssinian slave and he was purchased and freed by Islam. So those who say that Islam is all about slavery have actually got it wrong. Islam came in to abolish or to diminish it in such a beautiful way that if we get a moment in one of the episodes, perhaps we will explain this. And this is why if you look at what Islam has done for those who were slaves, it purchased as many as uh, it could and freed them. So much so that it made it, a, it made it a, an act of worship to purchase and free slaves. And it made it compulsory upon some of those who had engaged in certain sins uh, in order to be forgiven to free a slave if they had any as the first point of seeking forgiveness. So this was a unique uh, thing that Islam had come up with in order to stand up for rights of those who were downtrodden and the slaves and so on. So Bilal ibn Rabah had accepted the message. If you take a look uh, at Suhaib al-Rumi later on had accepted the message. This was the treatment of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for them. He gave them much importance. It's important with us as well, when we see the poor and the needy, we give them a smile as well. That is very important. We, we give them importance. They are respectable human beings, but perhaps circumstances have kept them where they are as a test for us, how we treat them and a test for them, how they handle themselves in that particular condition. So if you take a look, for example, at the beauty of this faith, uh, even in the Medina era, 
where Muhammad, may peace be upon him, uh, was faced with a huge challenge of housing uh, thousands of people who had migrated from Mecca to Medina, uh, there came a, a, a time when a place was set aside uh, in order to uh, cater for those who were very, very poor, to educate them uh, and to give them their own space of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And up to today, you will find a raised platform in al Madinah al-Munawwara, uh, similar to that particular place or at that particular place, uh, was the refuge for these who were more or less downtrodden and so on uh, in order for them to achieve certain goals. And this was, they were known as Ahlu Sufa. This is something interesting because they were at one stage considered as the lower end of society. But that was prior to Islam. When Islam came in, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his treatment of them and the rules and laws set by Allah Almighty had actually raised their status so much that today uh, people would go there and pray for them. Subhanallah. May Allah bless them all and may He bless us. And this is why it is important for us to learn that the, the, the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not confined to the upper class. In fact, those who accepted the message and those who accepted the messages of the prophets were generally initially from a class that was considered middle or lower. And this was the same with Muhammad, may peace be upon him. It is only later on that the upper class came uh, through to Islam and that too, not all of them, but perhaps a number of them. So uh, we ask the Almighty to bless us uh, and to grant us a lesson from this because it is not good enough for us uh, to be on this particular earth without knowing the blessed characters of this beautiful messenger of Allah uh, subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you take a look at uh, the verses of the Quran, Allah indicates quite clearly that we have not sent you, O Muhammad, peace be upon him, except as a means of mercy for all creatures and for all the worlds. The term used is al-alameen. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ We have not sent you except as uh, a, a means of mercy uh, for all the worlds, mankind and all the other creatures of Allah and all the generations to come. So this is why uh, if he was a means of mercy, uh, we need to study his life in order to understand how it was the case. Because many people try to tarnish the image of such a powerful, beautiful individual who spread and beamed mercy and mercy alone. And yet they have no clue what this man stood for and what he did in his life. And he had assisted friends and foe. There was an instance where uh, there was a female, a lady, an elderly woman who was uh, still in the pagan beliefs, who was assisted by Muhammad, may peace be upon him. And this is mentioned in the books of Islamic history, known as the books of Sirah. And she was helped by him carrying her belongings uh, for a distance in order to get to her house. And as they were walking together, with Muhammad, may peace be upon him, carrying this load, uh, she began to warn him, Oh, my son, you are such a good man. And you know, now there is a man in Mecca here who is swearing our idols and he is uh, saying this and he is trying to split us and divide us and he is causing problems in community and he is such a bad man. He's a magician and he's a poet and he is this and he is that. Do not go near him. Do not see him. Do not try to talk to him because he is very dangerous, venomous. Those who are interacting with him are falling into his magic. And this was the statement that they were uttering at the time. So later on, uh, Muhammad, may peace be upon him, at that time decided not to respond at all because he was helping the woman and he, she did not realize it is him who she is talking about. So as they got to the house and so on, she asked for an introduction, asked him who he was. And that is when he sees the opportunity to say, oh, my dear mother, do you know that uh, what you have been saying You've been talking about someone all along. And I just want to let you know that I am Muhammad bin Abdullah, Muhammad, the son of Abdullah, the person whom you are speaking about. The woman was drawn to tears because of this beautiful character, amazing person. And she said, do you know, if this is the case, I bear witness that you are indeed the messenger. And I bear witness that whatever message you have come with, the message of worshipping one God, the God who made you, and that's it. I bear witness it is true. You are the messenger. Look at that. Amazing. So it was the treatment of the downtrodden and the treatment of these who were actually looked 
uh, upon by community as people who were semi-valueless. Uh, this treatment is what resulted in the, the growth of this beautiful religion. Uh, Muhammad, may peace be upon him, was known as a person who was always with those whose hearts were more or less uh, broken by others in the sense that oppressed people, he stood up for them. And he made sure that he stood up for them and he made it quite clear that there will be no oppression. Anyone who does something wrong against someone else, no matter who this oppressed person is and what their standing was in society and community, he said he would ensure that justice was met. May the Almighty grant us peace and blessings. We hope in the next episode we will go through a few more beautiful aspects of the life of this great man, the greatest of creation, Muhammad, may peace be upon him. Jazakumullahu khaira. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.